So this is a test of, of Maui Linux that just came out recently, version 2. It looks very colorful and as I said this is really the very first time I'm trying this. I've not seen this before so everything I see here is for the first time. First of all the launch menu looks a bit different from what we know from other distributions. So for example I can show all applications at once here which is really a good overview over what is installed in the system. And there are quite a few that are notable, for example, Skype right out of the box, Steam. Also interesting what they're doing with this SUSE Studio. It's probably an installer thingy for USB th uh, thumb drives. And VLC Media Player right out of the box. That's a great experience because actually VLC comes with all the required plugins so unlike other systems like Ubuntu or Fedora where no matter what you do you never seem to have the right codec right out of the box. This is supposed to play almost everything. So of course I'm interested in how AppImage fares on the system and actually I'm recording this screen here using a tool called VocoScreen which I am actually running out of an AppImage right now. So this should be proof enough that AppImage is running here in principle but I'm also interested in integrating AppImages a little bit deeper into the system. So I'm going to the web page here or let's actually Google for it. Let's Google for app image tool. There is a repository where I'm working on app image tool and the optional app image D daemon that allows one to deeply integrate app images with the system. To get the lat latest build, um, we have to go to the Travis CI continuous build system and have a look at the latest build log. If we scroll down here on this page we should find a URL, here it is, of AppImageD, the AppImageD daemon. And I'm copying this link, copy, and actually let's go here, download this little thing, download. It's really a tiny little command line tool. Let's save that and let's open a terminal. There is probably an easier way to get at a terminal, but here it is. And let's save this. Save. OK. So now make this thing executable. Should be downloaded. Now, why did it add .bin to the file name? That's actually strange, but let's do that change mod a plus x, right? Now we should be able to execute app image d. And actually, yeah, it's not working due to someone renaming libarchive on Debian based systems. Even though we're using libarchive version 2, at least upstream is defining it as version 2, Debian-based systems seem to disagree about the versioning. So actually what we have to do is sudo lns user lib x8664 libarchive so.13. That's what it's called on Ubuntu and, Fedora and, and OpenSUSE systems, but not on Fedora, strangely. But simply doing a sim link like this should do the trick. And actually now we are able to run app image D. Now on this system, I already have some app images lying around, which app image D is now recognizing and registering with the system. Once this is complete, or actually while this is happening, we should be able to have a look at the list of applications being added here based on the information that comes inside the app images. And indeed, uh, as we can see, this is happening. Now, clearly, there are more applications available than we had originally on the system. For example, I'm not sure whether Krita was there in the default, or KDN Live, or uh, Natron. Um, so let's pick one that wasn't here for sure, for example, Spotify. 
just click on it and Spotify should now launch, which it actually is. So really that's very simple. Now one thing I immediately noticed is that not our, all icons are showing up correctly. For example, Spotify is missing its icons, so something seems to be wrong here. And actually it can be necessary to log out of the session once and log in again so that the additional paths that have been created for the icons are found by the software. So if we go to home my username dot local dot share dot icons this is where the icons are being placed so for example here under high color let's go to let's say 128 apps there should be the icons of the applications and actually they are so here is the Spotify icon uh, so if I log out of the session and re-log in again it should actually show up yeah, so far for a first initial quick test, well, let's test one more thing. Let's start Spotify, it's launching here. And let's do a right click on its icon here. Now in some operating systems, it shows here an update option, a desktop action for updating the app image. It doesn't do that here. Now why that is, well, maybe this particular app image doesn't include update information that might well be um, well do I have one let's let's actually download one where I know for sure that it has the update information let's use the leave pad app image just Google for it here on the bin tray if we go to the latest version and then files we can download a tiny little app image just save it to the default download location if everything goes well app image D should have registered it with the system so that we should be able to run leave pad from here yeah here it is and let's just run it here it's running and if I now do the right click ah look here is the update option so let's click that it's checking with the server and actually it says it's already the latest version that we have so everything is actually great so far the test of Maui Linux I'm really positively impressed so far also app image seems to be running quite well and app image D is a work in progress but also looking actually quite decent already